Welcome to Electron Line. Now the next very important aspect of a telescope is its ability to resolve things. It's called the resolution of the telescope. Remember in the previous video we saw how important it is to have a very large collecting area to collect photons either with the collecting lens so called the objective or the objective mirror. The ability to take in enough light to be able to see the image is really important. But in addition to that, we want to see the detail on the image. And in order to see the detail, we also require as large a telescope as possible. It all comes down to the size of the telescope. Size is everything when it comes to telescopes. So let's say that this is the size of the objective lens or the objective mirror. So this is called the objective. And the objective will have a certain diameter. Let's call that D. And some of the biggest telescopes in the world, they have diameters of over 30 feet, like the Keck telescopes in Hawaii have a diameter of 32 feet, about 10 meters in diameter. So here's the equation that tells you what the resolution angle will be of a telescope. We'll get to that equation in just a moment, but let's get a better feel of what we mean by resolution. Imagine you're standing a number of miles away from a set of mountains. Let's see, there's two mountains right here. And the ability to resolve the mountains, knowing that there's two of them, will depend upon this resolution angle. The better the instrument is, the smaller the angle, angle can be, and you can still resolve the two mountains as being two separate mountains. It happens a lot when you're driving through the countryside or you're driving near some mountains. You look in the distance and you see something that looks like a single mountain. And as you get closer, all of a sudden you realize, wow, there's two of them. You can resolve that there's two mountains. So here you can see that when you're farther away, the angle between the two mountains is smaller. And when you get closer, the angle between the two mountains gets bigger. The bigger the angle, the easier it is to resolve. The smaller the angle, the more difficult it is to resolve. And bigger telescopes are able to resolve even when the angles are small. And that's what it's all about. When someone says, what is the resolution angle of this telescope? What they're asking for is, how small can the angle be where you can still resolve something? For example, let's say we're taking a look at the moon. We, let's say we have a telescope. So here's our telescope. Well, not a very good uh, telescope, but hey, there it is. And let's say you're trying to look at the moon and you want to see craters on the moon. Well, the bigger the crater, the easier it is to see that there's a crater because the angle of resolution is bigger. The smaller the crater, the more difficult it is to see the crater to even realize it's there because the angle of resolution is smaller. So what is the smallest angle you can still resolve things at? That's what it comes down to. And here's the angle of resolution. Theta, we'll just use any Greek symbol, theta is a common one, is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth lambda divided by d. Lambda would be meters, meaning the wavelength in which you're observing the object. In this case, we're talking about visible light, so this would be the wavelength of visible light. And d is the diameter of the objective. Now, when you look at something with the naked eye, the, the, the diameter is simply the diameter of the pupil, very tiny. A very tiny d means a very big resolution angle, meaning you, you can only resolve it when you get really close and the angle is really big. When you have a really big D that gives you a very small resolution angle, that means you can resolve things very easily even if the angle is really small. So a really big telescope can see very small craters. A small telescope can only see the bigger craters on the moon. Lambda in meters. Now, in astronomy, we also sometimes write the equation like this. Instead of 2.5 times 10 to the fifth, we divide this number by a million, and now we express the, the uh, wavelength in micrometers. For example, for visible light, that would be anywhere from, let's say, 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometers. Or if you want to express it in meters, you can use this equation, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But let's do an example of this. So let's say we want to see a crater on the moon. And we want to know how big a crater we can see. So what can be the angle of resolution? Well, visible light, typically we see things in terms of uh, 500 nanometers, anywhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. So we can say that theta is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth times, let's say 500 times 10 to the minus nine meters. So that would be the typical wavelength of visible light divided by the diameter and let's say that we're using a small telescope at home where diameter is equal to, let's say, 4 inches, which is equal to 10 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. So we express this as 0 0.1 meters for a small telescope. And now we get the answer in arc seconds. So what is the angle of resolution of a small telescope, 4-inch telescope? It's about this big. 
So let's try 500e to the 9 minus times 2.5e to the 5th divided by 0.1 equals, and I get 125 microseconds, or I should say arc seconds, not microseconds, but arc seconds, and that is approximately two arc minutes. So that would be the smallest angle of resolution. Not very small, that means you can only see small craters. You can't, I mean big craters, you can't see the small ones because they would not be visible to you. But let's say instead of using a small telescope that is only four inches, let's say we use the Mont Palomar telescope where the diameter is equal to five meters, which is about 16 feet. That used to be the biggest telescope in the world when it was built back in the 1940s here in California. And so uh, let's see how small a crater we can see with a telescope like that. So theta is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth times the wavelength of visible light is the same, 10 to the minus 9 meters, divided by, now we have a 5 meter telescope, and 125 uh, divided by uh, 5 times 0.1 equals, that's better, yeah, 2.5 arc seconds, now that's a whole lot better, 2.5 arc seconds is a really small angle, meaning we see really small craters on the moon versus a small telescope that you can buy at the local store, uh, that you can see only the very big craters on the moon in comparison. I said, well, wait a minute, can I see the big craters with the naked eye? And the answer is yes, you can, but with a telescope, it's amazing the detail you can see. And with the really large telescopes, it's enormous. You can see just about anything on the surface of the moon that's smaller than a football field. All right, so that gives you a pretty good idea about what we mean by the resolution of an image or the resolution of what you're looking at. Again, smaller is better. And when we talk about the resolution angle, and you get a better or small resolution angle with a bigger telescope. So if you want to get a good telescope, you want to be big, one, because you can collect more photons, and two, you get a much smaller resolution angle so you can see much finer detail on the pictures. And that's what we mean by the resolution of an image.